Hello, my name is Thomas Greco, and welcome back to Getting Started with the Ember CLI. Today, we're going to learn how to hook up our Ember application to Firebase. And by the end of this tutorial, we will have created a to-do list application that we can add and delete items to with the help of Firebase. For those new to Firebase, it allows us to build full stack applications without having to manually configure a backend. Instead, Firebase provides different URLs that we can use to store, retrieve, and modify data and more. These URLs are mapped to a Firebase instance, which is just our database. Now signing up for Firebase is free. All you have to do is go to firebase.com and you can get started in no time. Once you have done that, you'll be able to start working with it. The graphical interface you're looking at right now is called the Firebase Forge. Right now, we don't have any to-do list items, so our database is empty. However, we are soon going to be able to view our to-do list items right inside of here. Now that we know a little bit about Firebase, we need to add it to our project. Now, I already have it installed inside of this project. However, if you don't have the Emberfire library in your project, you're going to need to run Ember install Emberfire right now. Once that's done running, Ember is going to create an adapter for us and configure a lot of Firebase for us, which we will soon see. Now, if you go into our project and look inside our config folder, we see that our environment file has been modified to work with Firebase. This is really awesome because all we need to do is pass in the name of our Firebase instance to this piece of code and our application will be ready to use it. The next thing I want to do is model the data that's being sent to Firebase. Inside this model.js file is where I'm going to define the properties about our to-do list. Because this is just a sample to-do list, I'm going to give these items two properties, name and date. A large part of Ember is the Ember data library. As you can see, I'm using this ds.adder statement, which is the syntax that Ember uses to model data. By writing this, we are telling Ember that when name is added to the data store, it should be stored as a string. And when date is added, it should be stored as a date. You may be wondering, how will this get sent to Firebase? Because we really didn't have to deal with much. Well, when we installed the Ember Fire library earlier, the Firebase adapter was created for us. Ember uses adapters for a number of different things. In this case, Ember uses the Firebase adapter to automatically wire the input for name and date in this application directly to Firebase without having to leave the realm of Ember. Because of this, we are completely ready to start creating records that make use of the name and date property. And as you can see, it took hardly any time. The next thing we need to do is go into the control of our to-do route and define a function that will add new records to the database. Inside of this action hash, I'm going to add a function named create to do. Here, I'm first going to create a variable named new to do. Inside this variable, we will see some Ember data terms again, as we use this dot store method to access Ember's data store. Additionally, this is telling Ember to create a record named to do, which will store the name and date properties. Once the to do variable is created, I then am going to call save on it so that it stores it inside of our database, which in my case is located at the tech blog instance we saw before. The last thing I quickly want to do is use this is use the this.set method so that our input value will reset to an empty string whenever a new to-do is added. Inside of this route.js file, we are going to add some logic that will retrieve our to-dos. Now, the route.js files are responsible for specifying the data that we want to display. In our case, we want to access all of the to-dos inside of the function, so we're simply going to create a model function, which will return all of the to-dos inside of our data store.
Notice that I'm using the find all method instead of just the find to ensure that I am calling each to do in the list. Before we serve our application, let's quickly take a look at the template that we will be dealing with. Inside here, you'll see that I set up a basic panel to make our application look a little less bland. However, we are mainly concerned with the curly brackets or mustaches as they are often referred to. By taking a look at them, we see that our create to do function is going to fire off each time this button is pressed. Once a to do is finally added, we are then going to iterate through the names of these to dos using that model function that we specified in our routes file which, as we know, will retrieve our to-do list. That being said, let's now begin adding to-dos to our application. Now that we've added some to-dos, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. Now if we take a look inside our Firebase Forge, we see that all this input is being added to our to-dos endpoint. So we can essentially just go to our instance slash to-dos and see all of our records. Now the Firebase Forge is really cool as it allows you to modify information and collect a lot of data and it does this all in real time, which we are about to see firsthand. If you're interested in learning more about Firebase, feel free to leave some feedback in the comments below. In the meantime, you can check out SitePoint.com as they have a ton of different tutorials and informative articles about the service and how it's used. Now that we've added some to-dos, let's wrap this up by adding a button we can use to delete items inside of our list. This is going to look similar to the create to-do action we use to add items. However, we need to add the word to-do at the end of our helper. As a result of this, we'll be able to access the to-do we defined in the each model as to-do statement. Over in our controller, all we need to do is create a function named delete to-do. When we added a to-do onto the end of our action helper in the template file before, it made the list of to-dos that we are iterating over available to this delete to-do function. So, we are now going to pass in to do to this function. Now that that's done, all we have to do is call to do dot destroy record and we should be all ready to go. By taking a look back at our application, we can now click these buttons that are accompanying each to do list item and watch as they get removed from our to do list. Inside of our Firebase Forge, we also see that these items are being added and removed in real time, which is an unbelievably powerful feature as speed is such a crucial aspect of web application performance today. And this concludes my video on integrating Firebase with Ember.js. As always, feel free to reach out if you have any questions as I would be more than happy to help.